Good afternoon, Martin here again from the Philippine Hospitality and thank you for joining us once again for our free day Friday session. All right. So as mentioned, no, we've been doing this upskill learning sessions for our tourism stakeholders because we understand the challenges that we are all going through. No? So in every little way that we can, we're trying to help no, uh, upskill our tourism professionals so that number one, no, we can maximize our time during this uh, pandemic. And number two, we can better prepare ourselves to become better professionals once we go back to our workplace. Now, just a little recap of what we discussed no, during our uh, Monday motivations. No, I, I hope you, you like our motivational Monday session where we invited some of our tourism professionals with us. No? So with us, uh, joining us uh, last Monday was Mr. Lax Mendoza. He's an ASEAN master. Uh, he, he is currently the tourism officer of Dolores no? in Laguna. Now, uh, as a travel agent, of course, naapektohan yung kanyang trabaho. And so ang ginawa niya, he's currently uh, selling a lot of things. No? Uh, nakita niya na merong pangailangan yung kanyang community and in order to prevent them from uh, going pa to the market, nag-develop siya ng gulay to door express na kung saan nag-deliver siya ng mga produce, no? And as well as helping yung kanilang mga local farmers. We also had with us uh, si Ms. Yafa Cirelos, who is currently a flight attendant from Cebu Pacific. So even as a chief, no, even he, she's already a lead cabin crew, ang ginawa niya, nag-establish siya ng kanyang mini grocery at home no may nakita niya merong allocated space merong pang available space sa kanilang bahay so ni revive niya yung dati nilang store so she actually invested her own money to buy produce so not only that ano rin siya uh, accredited or licensed certified financial advisor na rin siya so uh, we understand the importance of finances right now no the importance of saving the importance of investment and so you know, it's very good that you understand the, your current situation and you better plan for your near future. No? So last but not the least, we also introduce si Mr. Rap Buendia. No? He's actually an operations manager from FB Hotel in Coronadal, South Cotabato. And ang ginawa naman niya is, dahil mahilig din siguro siya sa pagkain, no? nag-share siya ng kanyang mga nabibiling mga pagkain sa kanyang mga kaibigan, sa kanyang mga colleagues, no? sa kanyang mga uh, clients. No? So, ayun. Ang ginawa niya, sa sobrang dami, no? ang dami na po niyang na-offer ngayon sa kanyang mga colleagues and friends. Right? So, what about you? No? I hope we can hear your comments. No? Uh, maybe you can share with us, ano ang pinagkakabalahan niyo? What What's currently your side hustle? Diba? Sinabi natin, it's very important to have a side hustle nowadays because it's really a challenge. No? Karamihan sa ating mga tourism stakeholders na wala ng trabaho. Right? And this is actually a segue to our segment for today. No? Ang, ang pag-uusapan natin today will be about uh, transitioning. No? So, na, dong previous episode natin, na-discuss natin the importance of of having a side hustle. Yung iba naman, nagde-decide sila, sabi nila, parang gusto ko na maging entrepreneur. Parang yung side business ko, yung side hustle ko, parang yung kinikita ko, parang mas maganda na kesa dun sa kinikita ko nung sumusweldo ako. So, how do you do that? When some of you are probably thinking, no? some of you are probably asking, how do you transition from being an employee, a full-time employee, Maybe tapos biglang magpa part time ka na sa iyong business to full time, no? Because actually that's that's what happened to me as well, no? Uh, for most of you who probably know my story, uh, I was in the hospitality industry for about ten years, no? I've worked for different hotels and resorts all over the country. I've held different positions, different departments, no? So medyo dinaanan ko na iba't ibang mga positions and departments. And so ang, ang ang dream ko talaga really was to become a general manager. But then through through time, no, I learned, no, when 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 I was interviewing people, nalaman ko bakit merong gap. Bakit kaya yung ating mga tourism professionals, even if mga hospitality tourism students, bakit kaya kulang pa rin? Bakit why do we have to train them all over again once they're in the workplace? So I noticed that there was a gap and in order to be part of the solution, sabi nga nila, eh, kaysa mag-comment ka, kaysa mag-criticize ka, 
always be part of the solution. And so that's what I did. When I was in my last operation stint, I was with Conrad Manila, you know, Hilton Hotel and Resort, no, uh, in Mall of Asia in Pasay. I was already in operations. I was the mall operations manager for Esmezon, no, yung kanilang luxury mall there. So okay na, no, I was able to achieve a certain level of the position. I was head of the of the organization already. And yet people would ask me, why did you leave pa? Bakit pa? Because during that time, I was part-time teaching. No, I had this sense of purpose in me. Na I felt, parang I wanted to teach our tourism stakeholders. So ang ginawa ko po, nagpart-time po ako sa isang uh, school, no, in Lyceum in Manila, right? Nagturo po ako ng part-time every Saturday. So whole day Saturday, I taught front office, and that's where I learned na grabe ng hirap palat talaga magturo, no? So uh, snap salute, snappy salute sa ating mga educators po dyan dahil grabe po, napakahirap po ng inyong trabaho, no? Uh, some think na, okay, after school wala ka nang gagawin, hindi, hindi pala ganun kadali, no? So, mahirap pala siya and so, I respect and I give I would like to honor you, no? For for your commitment to your job. But when I was doing that, I I had this passion na parang I wanted to teach Pero paano ko gagawin yun, di ba? Nasa trabaho ako. And I know, alam naman po natin, no, hindi po ganun kataas. No? Who, who among you would agree na hindi po kataas? No? Na dapat talaga. I think the, the prof- teaching profession is one of the understated uh, siguro no? na, na profession na medyo dapat taasan pa yung kanilang mga sweldo. No? If you agree, no? if you believe that, maybe you can comment, share your insights in the comment below. No? But really, uh, it's, it's really a challenge. But Nung ginawa ko po yun, nagtuturo ako ng part-time, it's something that I really wanted to do. So, ang ginawa ko po, sige, sana, ano, no, nagturo po ako every Saturday, and it lasted for one sem. No? But I, when I was thinking, parang hindi ko siya kakayanin, parang it's not going to be sustainable if I'm going to do it full-time, right? So, nabigyan po kami ng opportunity. I was handling, uh, nag, nag, matagal na po, actually, just a backtrack, no? Uh, I was already thinking of setting up my own consultancy because in my previous experience, uh, in the last few years of my operations in the hotels, I was already with a management consultancy company. And so I, I thought that it's something that I really wanted to do, but I don't know yet how to do it, right? So, yun po, no? nagbigay po ako ng time. Sabi ko, oh, sige, I think I really have to gather more experience. I have to establish more credibility, right? So, ganun po ang ginawa natin. Now, uh, there was a time, no, na nagkaroon po ng opportunity to be invited by the Department of Tourism. It was three years ago, and I believe uh, that was the time they launched the Tourism Industry Skills Program. So, yung TISP po ay isang programa na binigay or ginawa po ng Department of Tourism dahil nagkaroon po tayo ng budget, no, coming from the Canadian government. So, nagkaroon ng fund kung saan nabigyan po ng opportunity to conduct training for tourism stakeholders. Kasi alam po natin no, na ang tourism stakeholders and tourism per se can generate a lot of employment. It has a domino effect, a positive impact to our uh, economy. right? So naniwala po ang ating gobyerno na, na dapat pagtuusan, uh, pagtuunan siya ng pansin. Right? So ganun po ang nangyari, nagkaroon po tayo ng tourism industry skills program, right? So, nung time na yon, nag-iisip pa ako, parang, parang this is the opportunity for me no, to set up my consultancy company and to go full-time. But how will I do it? Diba? Nakakatakot kaya, no? Coming from a stable job, kung saan nagtatrabaho ka, sumusweldo ka, 15, diba? Hanggang katapusan. Ito po, hindi kasigurado kung kailan ka magkakaroon ng training opportunity. So, paano natin gagawin yun pagka ganun, no? Maybe you can share your insights. How do you ano, deal with those kinds of things? No? Pagka ikaw ang nandun sa sitwasyon na gusto mong mag full time ng iyong negosyo, right? Paano kaya tayo magta-transition? Right? So, there you go. No? Uh, pag-usapan po natin. So, that's going to be our topic for today, right? And in our upskill live learning sessions, the transition from employee to entrepreneur no so sana makakuha tayo ng mga tips no on how we can do that it may not be upright no? hindi naman natin sinabi na agad 
agad one snap of finger, you're an entrepreneur kagad. So, pwede natin gawin, katulad din ginagawa nila rap, no? Kat- nila Yafa at si Lax, no? Na pwedeng, while you're working, while you're on the job, no? Baka pinagawa mo na yung iyong munting negosyo, right? So, we're going to give tips later on how we're going to be doing that. So, we're, again, we're here. Welcome to our free day Fridays kung saan uh, in general, no, we're going to be talking about a lot of things, right? But let us first define una an entrepreneur. No? Ano ba ang entrepreneur? Or entrepreneur, sabi nga nila, di ba? So, an entrepreneur daw is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses. Yung iba kasi, hindi lang nakokontento sa isang negosyo. Marami. Nakikita nila maraming opportunity. So, yun po ang ginagawa nila, right? So, taking on greater than normal financial risks in order to do so. Ito po, malinaw na malinaw, sinasabi na po natin, na meron pong risk maging entrepreneur, no? Magi ang sabi nila, no? Uh, in higher risks, there's higher reward, no? Pero mahirap po yan, no? Hindi po yan basta basta. So we really have to consider, right? Uh, ang maraming mga factors, right? So yun po ang challenge natin, no? Yan po ang ating definition of being an entrepreneur. So before we proceed, no? Maybe I can share you with this, no? Sabi ni Miss Lori Griner, Entrepreneurship is the way we take control of our lives in a B. No? Ngayon po, napaka-tindi po ng ating sitwasyon where we are really in a tough economy, especially if you belong to the tourism industry. Do you agree? No? Lahat po talaga tayo, apektado. No? Mahirap po talaga ang mga sitwasyon na pinagdadaanan natin because again we know we understand that the tourism industry is one of the most hit no uh, industries here in the Philippines in fact minabasa po kong article no it was shared by GMA7 this morning and nabasa ko po as much as 75,000 tourism professionals ang mawawalan ng trabaho that's that's the forecast no I think the forecast is based on the number of rooms here in the Philippines, right? So, nasa ganong bilang po ang pwedeng potentially mawalan ng trabaho. So, kung ikaw po ay kabilang dun sa nawalan ng trabaho or currently walang trabaho right now, then anong pwedeng gawin? No? So, naka, ng Monday, nag-share ng ating mga tourism professionals, anong ginagawa nila? Ngayon, yung iba talagang nagpo-full-time na, ginagawa na, buo, no? As a whole, yung kanilang pagiging negosyante, yung kanilang pagiging entrepreneur, right? So ngayon, paano kaya natin gagawin yon? Anong pwede natin gawin in order for us to transition, right? So let me share with you this article I saw, I read in entrepreneur.com. It was created by Patel, no? Actually, it was 12 tips to go from employee to entrepreneur. But uh, with our limited time, I'm going to share, I'm just going to highlight uh, the the ano, top 10 na lang tips no yung para tayo yung mag-transition from being an entrepreneur okay so let me share you this no so, ito po yung top 10 tips to go from employee to entrepreneur so paano po ba siya nag-start anong una niyang sinabi sabi niya is to determine what you'd like to do no ano ba talaga yung gusto mong gawin right so sabi nila no uh, is is it really about passion like katulad yon Nung una, gusto kong magturo. No? I wanted to impart the little knowledge, uh, experiences I've had throughout my experiences when I went up the corporate ladder sa aking experience po sa hospitality. So gusto ko po siyang ituro sa aking mga estudyante, no? ating mga trainees. No? So I was passionate with what I'm doing. But is it really going to be, kumbaga kikita kaya ako dun sa aking passion, right? So it's never just about passion. Sabi nila, di ba? It's really finding your passion, but it's more than that. I agree with Mr. Patel, no? Hindi lang siya basta passion. Sabi nila, what if magaling kang mag, ano, mag, tum, magtahe, no? O kaya ma, uh, hobby mo gumawa ng stitch, no? You're into stitch making. Will it necessarily generate you, you think, revenue or income? No, palagay nyo, no? So, it's not just about your passion. It's more than that. So, ano pa kaya? You have to think about your skills, your abilities, and your experience. So, sinabi po natin yan, no? napaka-importante na yung talent natin, no? It's not just about one. It's not having skills, your abilities, your knowledge, your experience, 
as a whole, gagamitin po natin yan in order for you to offer something, right? So we have to determine that. Ano kaya yun? What do you think, no? Can you share in, in the comments, no? What do you think, no? What, what's your passion, no? What do you like doing, no? Sa palagay mong magiging interesado yung iba, right? So consider what you can realistically see yourself doing for hours each day, for weeks and hours, right? So kaya mo bang gawin itong bagay na to? na buong araw, right? So, a lot of people are asking me whenever whenever I go do training, no? Sir Martin, paano mo nagagawa? Tumayo sa isang function room, kausapin ang uh, sobrang daming tao, whole day, and it seems hindi ka napapagod, right? So, because I like doing it, right? And ito, ah, just to be, ano, ano lang to, uh, reality check, no? Truth be told, Sa totoo lang, kahit hindi halata, mahihain po talaga ako, right? So, I'm not your typical, ano, uh, kumbaga, sabi nila, ambivert ang tawag doon. Kasi kung sa totoo lang, technically, no, when I take my tests, no, I'm actually an introvert, kahit hindi halata, no? So, pero because of my, what I'm doing, I decided, no, ginonvert ko po ang sarili ko maging ambivert na if I have to, if I have to talk to people, then I'm going to do that, no? So, ganun po, nag-shift po ako. And it's really a challenge. It's really a skill, right? Maybe we can discuss that in a separate topic, how I was able to do that, right? So, there, uh, yan po, no? Kailangan po matuto tayong alamin, no? Ano ba talaga ang passion mo? Ano ba yung kaya mong gawin? Ano bang may offer mo? Right? So, let's think about that. Right? So, next is to think about what others will pay for. Because again, setting up a business is entails money. No? <laughs> Meron pa rin yung kailangan. Hindi, hindi pwedeng puro passion lang. Meron pa rin, syempre, opportunities kung saan kikita ka. Kasi again, you're even considering of it replacing your job, right? So, dapat, it's not just going to meet kung ano yung kinikita mo as a as an employee, it has to even go further, right? And again, uh, opportunities abound for entrepreneurs, right? So yun, yan po, no? So you have to think about what others will be willing to pay for. Now, a viable business, sabi ni Mr. Patel, is the intersection between what you'd like to do and what others will pay for, right? So nasa gitna po yun, nasa intersection po yun ng dalawa. Right? So, dapat po, tignan po natin yun, no? What do you think will or are others willing to pay for? Right? So, yan po, no? Kailangan po natin i-discuss yan. Next would be to interview ideal customers. So, ayan po, no? Aalamin na natin, kakausapin na natin yung mga kakilala natin, no? So, dapat alam natin, no? You have to find a few people that you think would be your ideal client. So, kausapin mo na. No? And minsan, ito, ah, ito medyo challenging to. The people closest to you are usually the least or the first people who will not believe in you or your product. Ano ba? Nangyayari ba yun? What do you think? No? And it's the challenge. Some, sometimes mahirap magbenta sa mga kaibigan, yung mga, even your own family, di ba? It's really a challenge. So paano kaya yun, no? How will you find people? Who will you talk to? Right? So you have to talk to people. No? You have to weigh. No? Are there benefits no? that you can offer or service in line with their real needs? Pag nakausap mo na yung mga tao, aalamin mo kasi yung sitwasyon nila. Aalamin mo ano yung mga pangangailangan. Katulad ng sitwasyon ngayon, no? sabi nga nila, in every crisis, there's also an equal opportunity. Like what happened now, uh, karamihan po ng mga stores, restaurants are closed. No, ang hirap bumili sa grocery. Napaka-challenging. It will take you three hours before you can actually buy your stuff, right? So, ang ginawa ng ibang tao, katulad ng na-share ni Yafa, no, yung ating flight attendant na guest last Monday, nag-set up siya ng mini convenience store na kung saan halos lahat ng kailangan mo nandun na. Eh, bakit ka palalayo kung konti lang naman yung difference ng price dun sa grocery? Another would be uh, mga food, right? So, it's been a challenge... Yung iba, pagka wala kang quarantine pass, no? if you're not a designated person, you cannot go out. So, paano yon? Paano kung nag, medyo nakikrave ka ng pagkain or something na, na gusto mo? How, what, what are you going to do? Right? So, yung iba, nag-deliver po sila ng mga 
uh, food na gusto ng mga tao. Na kung tawagin nga nila is pasabay, di ba? Nagpapasabay sila bumili, right? Ng pizza or whatever, di ba? So, ganun po ang ginawa nila. Tapos, nag, nag-offer na lang sila ng a little bit of service fee, no? For that uh, initiative, right? So, you have to talk to people. You have to, siguro parang ano na lang yan, mini-survey, no? Pag-usapan nyo, ano kaya yung kailangan nila, right? Or your potential clients, talk to them. Do you think if I offer this, you will need it, right? So, pwede po nating tanong nun. Now, next is to design your marketing and business plan. So, here is from being wala lang, casual, uh, basta go with the flow, to being systemized. Kasi I think yun po ang difference ng isang uh, side hustle, no? Kung saan nag, nagbebenta ka lang ng mga, ng mga binabay and sell mo, no? Malilit na bagay, or from being an organized, or, or being an organization na talaga. You have to have your marketing and business plan. Sabi nga nila, lagi po sinasabi, no? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? And so you really have to have a plan. Now, today's marketing, yung marketing daw po ngayon, involves content creation, social media, email outreach, and more. Sobrang dami pong kailangan i-consider when you have an organization. Hindi lang pu- puro face value po ang nakikita ng ng tao dapat sa iyong social media, right? Ngayon po, nagagamit na ang social media in order to project no, your core beliefs as an organization. Like, for example, the Filipino hospitality, kaya po namin ginagawa to, Kasi core po no, sa aming organization na tulungan ng ating mga tourism stakeholders no, to equip us, to make us better professionals so that we, in turn, are better or will provide better service for our customers, for our guests, right? So, ganun po, no? Ang, ang, um, so, it has to reflect even through social media, okay? So, siguro, pwede po natin gawing future topic yan, no? Na i-consider because some uh, are, are having challenges sa uh, social media, sa personal branding nila, no? So, maybe that can be a challenge because sometimes ang hirap, no, i-separate. Uh, in fact, ako, just to be honest, I have a personal account, I have a professional account, no? Because I want to have a certain brand dun sa aking professional account, no? And ayoko naman sanang, ano, uh, ganun din lang lagi, na laging forma lang aking personal account. Right? So, you know, you have to weigh things. You have to consider that. Right? So, yan. Okay. Oh, by the way, tignan lang po natin, no? Si, ang ating Facebook uh, engaging live with us, si Miss Lalaine Ramirez. Sabi niya, another very informative topic. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much also, Miss Lalaine, for continuing to support us. Yan. So, Ren, continue po natin yung topic natin, no? So, it's about designing your marketing and business plan, Right? So make sure you know you'll approach each of these alternatives to introduce your idea to customers. So dapat medyo strategic. Okay, na, uh, some of us already established our our registration. Like for example, sa DTI, meron na tayong registered name, right? So after that, what's next? No, What's going to be your strategy? What's going to be your operations? No, What's going to be your budget? Ano yung initiatives mo in order to market your services? So, lahat po yun needs to be designed. It needs to be discussed or thought about, right? So, yun po, no? At the same time, no? Pag uh, talagang naisip na natin, nagawa na natin, then establish na your business plan. So, it has to detail, no? How you intend your business to function, no? Paano ka kaya mag-operate? Right? So, a lot of our entrepreneurs, even the most successful ones, started in their backyards, started in their garage, no? Ako, personally, I started with my own bedroom, di ba? Yung per- home office. Ngayon, we're all back to start. <laughs> we're back from scratch, no? We're all starting to work from home, di ba? So, I think, as an opportunity, baka pwede natin siya makita na, hey, maybe this is a realization for me. Maybe this is how I can start. Maybe this is one opportunity for me to consider being an entrepreneur, right? So, pwede po natin makonsider yan, okay? So, yan. So, na-mention natin. Number five, next is to set up your business on a small scale. Yung iba kasi, 
na sinasabi nila, mahirap maging negosyante kasi wala akong kapital. No? Maraming pera ang kailangan dyan para to set up your own business. Where in fact, not all businesses are like that. Meron kasi mga investments, may mga businesses na capital intensive. Na kahit tama po, no? na meron pong mga kailangan kapital talaga, na medyo malaki, in order for you to start. However, yung iba po, hindi po kailangan. Right? So, ano po bang mga basic na kakailanganin ng inyong business? Right? So, you have to consider those. Think about that. No? If you can test your company idea by launching on a small scale on the side while still working on your day job. So, pwede rin po yun. Yung iba sa atin ngayon, work from home. So, again, no, sabi natin in our previous episodes, it's very important that you plan your week. Now, if you think na, okay, hindi ka naman time-based, no? hindi output-based ka, nagawa mo na yung trabaho mo, then maybe you can allocate time now for your own business, right? But again, I'm not saying that you take time away from your current job because again, that's that's ano naman, that's unfair naman for your current employer. No? So you really have to be, ano, siguro, i-budget nyo lang po yung oras nyo. If you think you've allocated a lot of time or enough time for your current job, then maybe set more time for your business. But again, you're going to have to weigh things because definitely it's going to take away from your personal time naman, from your quality time with your family, di ba? So yeah, no, you have to weigh things down. Now, titignan po natin, no? so balik po tayo dun sa na-mention ni Mr. Patel. No? So sabi niya, this gives you a no-risk opportunity to test your ideas, get your first clients, and see if the business will hold up over time before you leave the security of your current position. In the past, no, when I was still pondering of setting up my management and consultancy company, marami na po akong kinausap. In fact, bago pa lang po akong naging ASEAN master noon. I think that was 2008, if I'm not mistaken, or, ay, sorry, 2012 or 14. I'm, I, I got my dates mixed up, no? But the, that was the time that I started talking to other ASEAN masters. Sabi ko, I think it's best we collaborate. I think we can do more. Wag tayong maghihintay. Kasi during that time, it was a challenge for the Department of Tourism to create initiatives for the MRATP. No? Kasi, syempre, marami po silang kinoconsider sa, in terms of tourism development, in terms of planning. Marami po silang iniintindi. So sabi ko, as private stakeholders, as professionals, as ASEAN masters, Siguro dapat gumawa tayo ng organization kung saan, you know, we can reach out. Kasi our job, our role really was to cascade, to promulgate the ASEAN Common Competency Standards for Tourism Professionals. Diba? Yun na rin naman yung trabaho namin as ASEAN Masters. So sabi ko, why not make it as an organization? And a lot of people agreed, no? So sabi nila, okay, sige, pwede yan, right? But however, a lot of them were working for established companies. In fact, a lot of them were holding high positions already. So medyo mahirap. Talagang sideline lang nila pwede gawin niyang consultancy. Right? So again, you have to consider that. Now, we'll talk about that later on more in detail. Right? But moving forward with our topic, you have to assess feedback and adjust. Okay, ito. Very important po sa akin, ang feedback, right? So, even when I was still working for hotels and resorts, no, lagi ko pong sinasabi, no, it's, it's customer feedback that we really understand the direction of the business. No? When we talk to our customers, when we, when we know kung ano yung mga pangailangan nila, then that's the time that we can adjust. Right? So, napaka-importante, same with your business. You have to understand ano kaya yung kailangan. Huwag mong ipagpilitan na yung ginawa mo, yung handicraft mo, because ito lang yung design na alam mo, yan yung bibilin ng inyong mga guests or ng customer. Because we have varying, the, the needs, the wants of our customers, our guests are constantly changing. And so, tayo din po, dapat po natin marunong tayong mag-adjust, mag-evolve. No? So, alamin natin, kausapin po natin sila, ano kaya ang kailangan? Anong feedback? You have to assess and then go back to the drawing board because a lot of times, we have to readjust our strategies. No? At some point, siguro, gumagana yung ating strategy, gumagana yung ating produkto, bumabenta ang ating serbisyo. However, at some point, you will plateau. No? Dadating yung point, ah, 
mas maraming nakakaisip ng mas magagandang ideas kesa sa'yo. And so you have to evolve, right? So yan po, no, very important po ang feedback because it is straight from your customers, from your guests, from your clients that you will be able to adjust, right? So yan. So running a small-scale operation, according to Mr. Patel, will help you determine which parts of your idea are great and which ones need adjusting. So minsan tayo kasi inisip natin yung idea natin. Ito, good idea to. This is the best thing to do. But once na sinample natin sa ating mga ano, uh, clients, ay hindi pala. Right? So it's okay. No? And a lot of times as an entrepreneur, you will experience that. You will learn to adjust. You will learn to learn from your mistakes, di ba? Sabi nga nila. Now, you have to take customer feedback seriously and constructively. Baka naman nakakuha ka ng feedback, umiyak na tayo, namasaktan na tayo. Hindi pwede yun, right? So you have to make necessary changes before you can begin scaling up, before you begin, you know, expanding your business, right? So kailangan muna natin, again, start from the basics, okay? So eto na. So, for example, naisip na natin, oh, mukhang magandang idea talaga yung, talaga yung gusto kong gawin, right? Now you have to assemble a team. You have to develop a team, right? So, depende po yan sa operations nyo. Depende po yan sa servisyo nyo, right? So, based on the need, then you expand, right? So, kung kailangan, so for example, ah, ayoko nang maging teacher lang. Gusto ko nang gumawa ng sarili kong school, right? So, hindi naman pwede ikaw lang ang gagawa nun, right? So, you have to really establish no mga experts from different fields like for example i'm not uh, too keen on financials right so i need a an accountant to help me with my financials right i'm not into legal matters no so maybe i can have someone who will take legal right? or at least have a partner or a firm that can help me with legal matters right so yun po no if your idea seems vi vi viable then you have to determine who you want on your business leadership team, right? Hindi naman pwede lahat na lang ng kakilala natin, lahat ng kaibigan natin, ilagay natin sa negosyo. Because again, ito ah, personal, uh, naririnig natin sa karamihang tao, no? Or let, me, let us know if you yourself experience this, mahirap katrabaho ang iyong barkada, right? Or iyong close friend or kaibigan. Kasi... Sometimes friendship gets in the way, no? Masyadong lax, no? Parang, ah, okay, relax lang ako kasi kaibigan ko naman, barkada ko naman, right? So, yun lang, you have to really weigh because, again, if it's a legitimate registered business, then you really have to know who is going to be in your core team, right? Especially if it's going to be a partnership, no? Or a corporation, no? Later on, we'll be discussing more on that. But, Depending on your personal experience, you may need help in areas. Yan, sabi natin kanina, such as finance, marketing, no? If that's not your core, yung iba, mer marami pong kakilala. They're very good in operations, but in terms of selling and marketing, dun po nila kailangan ng tulong. So it's really about finding the right people to help you no? deliver, right? So there, customer service, yung iba, into production, di ba? Dun sila mismo sa production team, then you have to consider that, right? So, yan. Next is to secure financing. No? So, yung iba, sabi na, nako, ito na. Pera na ang kailangan. Depende po yan sa business. For a small venture, this might mean saving up some money to get through the first month. So, very important daw po yun, no? na once you operate, no, kailangan you can survive. Sabi nga nila, dapat at least, no, six months to one year or at least 18 months you can survive without any income no and that's much that's the, the kind of money that you should be having or have in order to survive yeah so expect again lagi natin sinasabi, expecting the worst but of course hoping for the best na eventually may kikitain ka rin, right so if your aspirations are a bit larger kung medyo po mataas ang ating pangarap then you may need to think about how to procure venture capital or outside investment. Now, I just wanted to share uh, yung aking ano, no? yung, yung brother ko po, meron po siyang show, and it's called The Final Pitch. Now, The Final Pitch uh, actually provides uh, 
investments no so para po yang ano no i don't know if you've seen an episode of the final pitch you can actually uh, you might want to check their facebook page as well as yung kanilang youtube kung saan nandun po yung kanilang mga uh, episodes now just to give you an idea uh, in the international context i don't know if you've seen yung shark tank kung saan may mga investors no mga billionaires millionaires who are willing to invest an amount to a, a business idea. No? Meron pong mga business pitches kung saan, ah, I want to be part of that. I want to have a share. Then I will give you a certain amount. Right? So, ang, ang final pitch is that uh, show rin here in the Philippines. And it's been, I think, it nasa fifth season na po siya, if I'm not mistaken. And ang ginagawa po nung show na yun, nagko-collaborate siya with other investors at yung mga investors na yun are picking no selected entrepreneurs to provide funding. So kung ikaw po isa po 'yan sa mga challenge no ng ng iyong organization and you want to scale up then I suggest you visit their Facebook page, you visit their YouTube, no panoodin niyo po yung mga episodes kung makita niyo yung uh, dynamics ng organization and if you think kaya ko yun na maganda yung idea ko kahit meron akong opportunity tapos kailangan ko lang kapital then you might want to prepare your pitches because of course no they're coming up with the next episode the next season kung saan malay nyo no someday kayo po yung mapili and be given the capital that you need to expand your business right so yun consider po natin yan no visit po natin yan okay now Moving forward with our topic, right, just to continue, the next is to set up the structure of your company. So, yan na po, no? Uh, meron na po, na-establish na natin yung business plan na natin. Alam na natin yung funding na kailangan natin. Then, it's time to set up the structure. So, you at the same time, you also want to decide what kind of company structure to register. Yung iba po, katulad ng sabi natin, are sole proprietors, no? Nag-register po sila sa DTI and I believe, ang DTI po, marami pong mga information dissemination, webinars as well on how to set up your business, right? So, kung kayo po gusto nyo maging sole proprietor, then you can register through DTI, but at the same time, register pa rin in your LGU, ah, local government, hindi po sapat ang isang DTI registrations, no? Because normally, typically, it's just, you know, highlighting your registration name or your trade name. Pero iba po, of course, ang local government unit, no? I suggest you also register in your LGU para naman po may contribution ng iyong organization sa economy, no? Lagi natin sinasabi para sa ekonomiya, para sa bayan, right? So please, go ahead and do that. Now, you have to decide, gusto mo ba maging corporation, no? Do you want to incorporate, form an LLC or limited liable uh cooperation or corporate uh, ano uh, organization diba or create partnership no so tingnan po natin yan no kung meron po tayong uh, organizations again all of these information are readily available in the internet please go ahead no gusto mo ba partner gusto mo ba ikaw lang gusto mo corporation kayo no so tingnan niyo po yan pag-isipan po natin yan no kasi yan, very important that we establish that from the start okay now, last. Okay, na-set up na natin lahat. Here you go. Ito nang pinakamahirap. It's time to leave your job. No? Sigurado ka ba? Kailang, alam mo na ba? Lahat na ba? Napagplanuhan nyo? Na, naisip mo na talaga lahat ng possibilities and you're ready to take on the plunge? Then, maybe it's time, di ba? Maybe you can consider now to leave your job. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. No? Ako, uh, I think most or more than being definite about the things na mal- alam ko mangyayari dun sa business ko. I think it's really more of the faith. No, For me, ito, to be honest, na, uh, real talk lang. <laughs> to be honest, it was really about faith. No, uh, I trust that my God will provide. No, I trust that uh, He has good plans for me and my family. And so I took the plunge. No, I, I decided to establish my company and just believe, right? So I think, sabi nga nila, ganun daw ang faith eh. It's, it's the absence of, of seeing really what, what you know, what will happen. But it's about believing, no? It's about trusting 
no and that 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 God will make a way no so ganun po ang nangyari sa akin when I do did decide to leave my job but if you think you're ready no to leave your day job then sabi nga nila no it may feel like an amazing feeling goodbye no sasabihin natin sa mga katrabaho natin bahala bahala kayo diyan di ba kanya-kanya na tayo no and some di ba nagkakalimutan na but i i recommend do not burn the bridges no sabi nila di ba you have to establish pa rin yung yung relationship with your uh, colleagues kasi you never know maybe you will need their help in the future maybe you will even get them in your company no some maybe will will even be your clients no so don't never br- burn bridges no lalo na po ang tourism industry napakaliit po ng ating industriya tama po ba right so kailangan po natin yan no wag po tayong uh, let's not burn bridges right so very important pa rin po na that we establish our relationship with our colleagues with our clients right so ayan yan na po ang top 10 tips no on how we can transition from being an employee to entrepreneur and really it's going to be difficult it's hard but it's a process it's best that simula pa ngayon pa lang no pagplanuhan na po natin pag-isipan natin yung mga recommendations na binigay ni Mr. Patel ng entrepreneur.com right and let's talk to ano it's it's always best to have mentors it's always best if you if you're planning to set up your travel agency it's always best to talk to successful travel agencies, right? Or tour operators who've been in the industry for quite a number of years already. So, kung meron ka pong iniisip gawin, go ahead and talk to them. Have a mentor, right? And so that they can guide you so that they so that you will not go through the same big mistakes they've they've been to in their journey being an entrepreneur, right? So, mahirap po, no? Marami pong learning experiences. Ako, to be honest, until now, I'm still learning. I'm still learning the rope. It's a journey. Sabi nga nila, hindi po yan race. It's not a race. No, it's a, it's not a 100-meter dash, but it's a marathon. You have to survive. Sabi nila, you have to survive the, the five years daw before you, ano, sabi nga nila, most of the startups, no? within less than less than 5 years nagsasarado right so if you can survive that if you can if you can not only survive but thrive in the process then congratulations no but again it's not an easy task sabi nila gusto ko maging entrepreneur kasi i want to have all the time ayoko nang mag eight, maging 8 to 5 but there is a realization wherein in fact na Pag ikaw ay isang entrepreneur, you will actually allocate more time than 8 hours. Because again, it's your own business. Pag hindi ka kumayod, pag hindi ka nagtrabaho, di ba? Anong kikitain mo, right? So you really have to weigh things. You have to consider what are you passionate about? Ano kaya yung palagay mong bibilhin ng mga tao? No? If it's not a product, if it's a service, what are you good at? No? How? Can you differentiate yourself from all the others who are offering the same service? Diba? Paano, anong kaibahan mo? Anong may offer mo? Right? As compared to them. Right? But again, it's never just about competition. It's about highlighting your special, unique character. No? Your, your, ano, sabi nga yung USP mo. Diba? Ano kaya, ano, ano kaya tayo na iiba? your unique selling proposition no bakit paano paano mo may offer ang sarili mo sa iba in such a way that ah pag itong for example you're a trainer di ba pag ito nagtrain sa amin iba yung pakiramdam ng mga ano ng mga participants namin right so talaga hindi lang sila natututo di ba and so ganyan 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 right so you have to differentiate yourself always di ba so yan po no that those are the few tips that we can share for this afternoon, now maybe I can end with a few quotes. No, lagi po natin ginagawa yan. Kasi again, gusto natin, we want to be uh, start, di ba? Kaya tayo may motivational Monday. We want to start the week right and end the week right. No, it's a Friday. I don't know if you've noticed. No, ang bilis po ng oras, ang bilis ng, ng linggo. No, na biglang Friday na weekend na naman. Excited ba kayo sa inyong weekend? <laughs> yung iba, talaga excited. Thank God it's Friday. But now, it seems it's all one and the same. Di ba? Para pong, <laughs> parang pareho lang din po yung ating mga araw ngayon. But anyway, um, 
I just want to end with this, right? Uh, I just borrowed a, a quote no, from Mr. Steve, at Paring Steve, right? Of course, the creator or founder of Apple. And sabi po niya, I'm convinced that about half of what separates successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. No? You have to be, sabi nga, na-mention na po natin last Monday, no, yung about grit, di ba? na kailangan po marunong po tayong lumaban. Marami po tayong challenges na tatahakin. Marami po tayong may experience. I've come to a point that I wanted to quit. No? I, I've said na parang gusto ko nalang maging empleyado, parang gusto ko nalang bumalik sa, sa quincena, quincenas katapusan. Kasi at least yun, sigurado ako may sweldo. Kasi alam ko, di ba, I, can, I have money to spend for my family, for myself, right? But again, you have to go back to your core. You have to ask, what is your why? Why do you want to establish your business in the first place? Is it just about making money? Is it just about being popular? Or is it about creating impact? About real change in your industry, in your community, and in your country? No, kailangan po natin isipin yun eh. And it's really about perseverance. You have to constantly push yourself to your limit. No? Na even if you want to give up already, you have to do whatever it takes to survive. Not only ano, no? teaching, but I also like ano, learning. So marami po ako mga groups, may mga Viber groups po ako, mga top entrepreneurs, mga businessmen all over the Philippines, at meron po doon mga mentors, no? mga established mentors, mga sikat na... Uh, personne, personnel or personas sa, sa entrepreneurship who share free, no? Talagang free willingly their insights, their experiences about entrepreneurship and how you can better survive this, okay? So, yun. Uh, another one, entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. No? So sometimes, yung negosyo, uh, it's really about sacrifice, di ba? Uh, it's really a challenge, no? Um, mahirap, it will take a lot of time, and you have to invest in time, effort, sabi nga nila, blood, sweat, and tears in order for you to survive this, right? But again, you have to think long, no? Titingnan po natin yung long term, di ba? Gusto nyo po ba? Ika'y papasok na lang, no? maninilbihan, at tutuparin ang pangarap ng ibang tao? Or do you also have a vision, a dream for yourself, right? So you have to think about that. No? You have to consider that. And lastly, I would like to end this. No? Never give up. Today is hard. Tomorrow will be worse. But the day after tomorrow will be sunshine. Yan. So galing naman yan kay Paring Jack Ma. Right, so yeah, no. I hope uh, we're motivated, we're inspired. Um, ma consider po natin, no. I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking now. I think I'm going to consider entrepreneurship, right? So you have to think about it, but more importantly, you have to plan it, right? So again, you're not alone. The Filipino hospitality is here to guide you, diba? Again, uh, we're looking at more partners, especially if it's related to tourism, diba? Because we believe that at the end of the day, we have to collaborate, you know, we have to work together in order for us to achieve our goals and our dreams. You know? So, yun na po, no? we're going to end uh, our session for today, our free day Fridays. But, ito po, a little teaser next on Motivational Mondays. No? So, pag-uusapan naman po natin what's going to be next. No? Ano bang Ano bang discuss natin sa Monday, right? So, we're going to talk about, uh, di ba na-mention na natin sa previous, ano natin, sa previous session about the importance of destination marketing na kung saan dapat ang mga tourism officers, ang ating mga travel agents, or ating mga, 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 kakil, mga kilalang tao, no? Or mga organizations in charge of promoting tourism, are supposed to be doing now. And we're supposed to be highlighting the destination. Sabi natin, di ba, we have to 
instead of sharing negative things in social media, why don't you share places, destinations where our tourism stakeholders can go to next? Diba? Because a lot of them are probably sick and tired of their uh, destinations. Yung kanilang banyo, kanilang kitchen, kanilang living room. Gusto na nilang mag-explore. Diba? So gusto nilang malaman, saan kaya ako pupunta? Saan pa ba ako hindi nakapunta? Sa dami-dami, sa 7,600 plus islands in the Philippines, ano pa ba hindi ko napuntahan? Right? So on Monday, we're going to be talking to James. No? Si James ay ating partner because again, part of the service of what we're doing in the Filipino hospitality is to help destination. So na, meron na po tayong offer na tourism planning no? uh, kung saan gumagawa po tayo ng tourism development plan no? the, or at least the framework. No? And we're helping destinations plan their destinations think of ways to promote them and promotion destination marketing is one no and so we're going to be talking to James siyang ating partner sa creatives kung saan gumagawa po sila ang kanyang organization nag, nag, eh, nag ang, ang kanilang expertise po ay ang pag-promote ng isang destination so meron po silang naging viral na video kung saan uh, feature po nila ang Kamigin right so i'm going to share this video and uh, panood din po and let us know what you think about this video. And on Monday, we're going to share kung ano yung naging inspiration nila on how to promote the destination. Okay? So I hope you like this. Friendship? Ano ba naman ito, Bel? Papunan mo sa akin? Ang liit-liit, ang himig, ang boring, wala akong kasama. Ay, sabi sabi sa kamigit. Saan ka na? Obvious ba? Ewan ko sa'yo. Sorry na. Eh, dapat kasi kasama kita dito. May emergency nga sa working. Ewan ko sa'yo, lilibilibig ang ticket, hindi ka masasama. Sorry na ka. Eh, anong gagawin ko dito sa kamigit? Tour guide kayo? Sure ka? Pipi ka? <laughs> naku, naku, naku ka talaga! Sumama na ako sa tour guide. Diyos ko po! Nakakaloka! Pipi mo naman, friend. Reminder ha. Pipi ang tour guide yung pipigay. Eto na nga. Ka namang harmless kaya ginuko na. Basta kung may mangyari sa akin, kasalan mo ha! Hindi ko nga alam kung saan ako dadalhin nito. Ay, naku, trust me, maganda na dyan. Paano kayo totoo nito? Hindi nga marunong magsalita. Hindi ka talaga mauubusan ang sasabihin, no? Just enjoy! Oh, asan na kayo? Hoy! Ito! Hello!
So there you have it. So no words, no. So what do you think about that? I know about that video. So now uh, maybe you can also think about how can you better promote your destination, right? Because some are always highlighting their fiestas, their key uh, tourist attractions, and of course, no. Nakita naman natin dinaanan pinasadahan din dun sa video na yon yung yung kanilang mga tourist attractions, but more than showing the attractions, what about the experience? You have to highlight what would be the experience. And yun nga, no? this video actually highlighted on the experience. Wala nang masyadong maraming salita. It's more of the, the feeling. It's more of the experience one will go through as you visit kami in. Right? So what about your destination? Maybe you can share, right? No? Ano kaya ang pwede natin gawin in order for us to better promote our destination? So yun, I hope you're excited. Uh, on Monday, we're going to be talking to the producer, no? the, the, the creatives behind that, that video. And maybe we can also be inspired on how we can better promote our destinations, right? So again, sabi nga nila, no? The tourism industry and tourism in general is everybody's business. We all have to work together in order for us to rise up back again and recover. No? So I hope no, we learned something today. I hope we're, we're motivated again, right? It's a Friday. I hope you enjoy your weekend and I hope to see you again. Join us on Motivational Mondays, all right? And until then... Uh, again, this is Martin saying goodbye.